What, if any, contact did you have with Mr. Depp during the period from April 21 to May 21, 2016? I had no physical contact with him. Okay. I'm going to take you to May 2nd, 2016, the Met Gala. Um, can you please just briefly describe to the jury what a Met Gala is, where it is, and what's involved? Uh, it, it's arguably the the biggest um, fashion kind of celebrity event, red carpet event of the year. It happens every year in New York City. And were you invited? I was invited. Um, typically designers uh, will invite people in the public eye to be their um, you know, guest and they will typically dress them and it's a way for designers or fashion to kind of intersect with the a celebrity world and and it's a big event held at the museum every year and what if anything did you and mr. Depp do to prepare for that Met Gala well Johnny and I were uh, we were dressed by Ralph Lauren guests of Ra Ralph Lauren uh, and Johnny missed the fitting uh, in because it was happening around the date of my birthday party in Los Angeles but we were planning on going um, together uh, as Ralph Lauren's uh, guests. Okay. And did you show up? I did. Um, I didn't have a phone at the time because uh, I couldn't get it reinstated after jo Johnny threw it out of the window because no one on his team would would respond to me. Um, so I had no way to kind of reinstall it. I had. Um, it's no point in getting a burner phone if you don't know anyone's phone number. So I. Um, uh, I, I wasn't sure really what was going on or when he would show up or if he would show up. No one would talk to me on his team. Um, no one would tell me. I didn't know. So I ended up going um, by myself. Um, frankly, I wasn't sure if he'd show up and, you know, on the carpet or if he'd show up at the hotel shortly before. Um, I, I had no way of knowing. And then did you attend the Met Gala? I did. I. Um, I got out of the car and walked the red carpet by myself, escorted by somebody from Ralph Lauren's team. Um, and uh, I sat next to an empty play setting for Johnny um, that they they cleared as soon as we realized that he wasn't, that he effectively stood me up on the carpet. Who, who did you meet at the Met Gala? I uh, was standing in line um, right in front of um, a gentleman. Uh, it was Elon. Uh, I didn't recognize him um, until we we started talking, and uh, he had reminded me that we had met once before. He was with his mother. Okay. And did you strike up a friendship with Mr. Musk after that? We did. We, um, as I mentioned, we spoke on the on the red carpet, kind of on the waiting in the waiting line. Of the carpet, um, he seemed like a, a like a real gentleman. He was really nice, and he sat next to me. Well, not next to me. He sat kind of in a nearby table, and we got to speaking that night, and then eventually became friends. Okay, I'm going to Michelle. Can you pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 46? It's already in evidence. It's Aaron Filotti's notes, and I'm going to ask you to go to page 30. And I'm, I'm going to direct your attention to the entry for 5-11-2016, where it says, uh, if I can see, here we go, let me, let me see if I can do some reasonable highlighting here. Okay, it says, client laughed and also reported using illicit drugs, mushrooms, and MDMA on 5-9-2016 at home with a high-profile male acquaintance. Court re client reported that her husband was not aware of the male visitor nor her illicit drug use. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Who, who was the high-profile male acquaintance that was, visited your home on 5-9-2016? Uh, I don't recall even being in L.A. at that time. Where uh, were you? I don't recall. Uh, I believe I was in London at the time. Okay. Um, did you have a male high-profile client at your home 
in or around 5 9 2016 uh, not around that date it seems like it's a wrong date okay and did you use illicit drugs mushrooms and MDMA with any high-profile client uh, no I did that at the Coachella Music Festival and that was the end of that I learned the hard way that that was a terrible idea all right well while we are on the um, uh, the same notes I'm gonna say I'm gonna refer to the Coachella which up, is up above and it says it states she ingested mushrooms and MDMA simultaneously while also consuming alcohol and states she vomited and was high for at least 24 hours straight were you high for at least 24 hours straight N no I was not I uh, I felt awful um, but I was at home feeling awful um, at home meaning at the hotel uh, with my best friend in bed. Okay. Well, while I'm still on these notes, let's go. I know um, while Aaron Filati was t was uh, testifying, we recall the 5-21-2016 isn't on here. Uh, you'd sent her pictures, correct? Yes, okay. I did. Then let's go to 5-26-2016, and it says, client reports having the hardest week of my life Client states she cannot deal with the negative media publicity she has received. Um, and then, if we can jump that up, Michelle, to the next page, surrounding the divorce she requested from her husband, J.D. Do you see that? I do. Okay. When did you go in for the DVTRO? May 27th. So after that was this. the day after Aaron Filati's note saying you just had the toughest week of your life? That's correct. Okay. While we are still on this one, let's go up to the first page for the client history. When did you provide a client history to Aaron Filati? Right. Never. When did you first get assigned Aaron Filati? Uh, I believe September of 2014. Okay. Now it says here that client um, reports a history of substance abuse, including an addiction to cocaine and liquor. When did you have a substance, a history of substance abuse, including addiction to cocaine and liquor? I did not. There's a lot of mistakes in here. Did you ever use cocaine? I have. I used cocaine a few times when I was 18, 19 years old, um, but stopped using um, any drugs, including cocaine, when I got into a relationship with my ex-partner. She was very against that, and I'm glad for it. Okay. Then it also says here that... Uh, where am I going to keep... Move up a little. Here we go. Client admits to history of anxiety, eating disorder, attention deficit disorder, bipolar disorder, codependence issues, and occasional insomnia. When have you had an eating disorder? I've never had an eating disorder. Okay. When have you been diagnosed with bipolar disorder? I've never been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. When have you been diagnosed with codependence issues? I have never been diagnosed with codependency issues, although arguably at the time from where I, well, at, from where I stand now, I can see that the relationship I was in with, with Johnny was certainly codependent. Okay. But I wouldn't have reported that at the time. I didn't know about that. All right. And then can we move up a little bit more, Michelle? Thank you. It has... Per report from J.D., Debbie R.N., Dr. Kipper, client A.H. has reportedly been experiencing increased anxiety and agitation recently and has had several outbursts of anger and rage. Were you present for this being reported to Ms. Filati? No, this is the detox. Okay. This is Johnny's. And it also says your mood has been labile. What if any outbursts of anger and rage and labile mood did you exhibit during the detox? None that she would have seen. None. I, I was there for Johnny's detox. This is what Johnny was going through. This is not me. Okay. And at the time of the detox, was Erin Filati your nurse yet? No, I didn't know her and she wasn't there. 
Okay. Thank you very much. You can take this down, Michelle. Now, I'm going to take you to May 21, 2016, and I'd like you to describe for the jury what took place that evening in connection with Mr. Depp. Johnny and I had not seen each other for the better part of a month, or about a month. I was traveling. I had just shot a campaign in Italy. I spoke to him uh, around that time when I was in Italy. Uh, I had gotten a phone. Uh, my parents got a hold of me. After I spoke to my parents, I had communicated with Johnny. He, on that phone call, um, you know, I didn't know what was going on with him for those weeks. With his sobriety, I didn't know where his state was. I didn't know what state he was in. And when I spoke to him, he um, was saying what I can only just, he was going on about, um, about scientists and DNA and uh, feces that he had had um, some, some, you know, scientific analysis done and DNA analysis done and that, you know, uh, as soon as I heard about this feces, he thought um, that was a prank and he was going on about all the, the, the scientists that he had conferred with, about the DNA results with, I was, just thought he was out of his mind and thought clearly the drinking and the drugs are not getting better. Clearly the delusions aren't better. So Jackson I kind calls of, for speculation. Your Honor, it's not about the truth of the matter. I'm talking about what her... I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Please continue. So I, um, uh, I hung up from that phone call, uh, assuming that, and <clears throat> then spoke to him once once my my parents got a hold of me to tell me about Betty Sue we made a plan Johnny and I uh, for him to come over uh, he said he really needed his wife um, he, he had lost his mother and he missed his wife he really needed his wife he said it over and over again I felt torn I felt conflicted I didn't think Obviously, the situation hadn't gotten better with Johnny mentally, and I was afraid that all the work and progress and distance I had finally got on it, on the relationship for the first time I had a month of distance on it, you know. Um, I, I didn't want that to be undone, but I also wanted to be, I was, you know, I was affected by the fact that his mother had passed. So uh, he said he wanted to come over and talk about that, and he said he needed his wife, and we made a plan. Um, I uh, we made a plan for, for him to come over during the day, thinking that that might mitigate the amount that he would be drinking. Night is a little bit more dangerous. And uh, in the early evening hours, I get a text from him that he's uh, almost there or that he's there. I think it was around seven fifteen or so. And he came over, and um, we sat on the couch, and at first, kind of. It was relatively peaceful. I mean, I could tell he was inebriated, but it makes sense. In my head, it made sense. It wasn't, he wasn't like incoherent. It was peaceful. And then he starts talking about the feces again and this prank that he said one of my friends had left for him in my bed that he wasn't going to be at. And I tried to point out how that didn't make any sense. I'm not even going to be there. I wasn't there. And my friends wouldn't do that. That's not something a bunch of 30-year-old women think is funny. What is he talking about? And he just kept going on and on about it. So I uh, I text my friend that it's... Objection hearsay. Uh, don't, don't tell us, don't tell the jury what you texted your friend, but go to the next thing. What did you do next? I uh, called my friend thinking that it would um, quell this, what I could only see as a delusion. I thought it was just a delusion he was having. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully, you know, quell this by calling my friend to, to, to if he hears my friend say that didn't happen. Maybe, yeah, we can say. Uh, he's, she's, she's, it's not offering for the truth of it. Thank you. Please continue. So I thought if I could get my friend on the phone to, to prove that this didn't happen, we could move on and talk about 
the issues this, that we should be talking about. You know, we had our marriage was over and falling apart in front of our eyes. We hadn't seen each other for a month, and his mom had just passed. I couldn't believe he wanted to talk about feces. So I call this friend thinking that we'll take care of it. The friend doesn't answer. I call another friend who is someone else he claimed. I don't know how both people did this, but he was claiming that this person was responsible. So I call that person. And that person is on speakerphone. And Tell I say- Tell us who that person is. Io. Io, tell it right? Io, tell it right. Okay. Uh, and then you put him on speakerphone with Johnny? Right in front of Johnny. Okay. And what happened next? I, I allowed for an opportunity for Io to say why this is impossible. Objection here, It's say. not offered to prove the truth of the matter, is asserted, Your Honor. It's explaining the context that leads to the next <laughs> acts. Your Honor, it is being offered we're to prove here. that. We're uh, uh, not here about uh, uh, whether uh, I owe. I'll, I'll sustain the, the objection. Bed. Next question. All right. Um, all right. So I owe is talking. You can't tell us what he said. Okay. Objection, talking, Your Honor. Correct. May we approach? Okay. I <laughs> So, I was talking, we can't say what he said, what is the next thing that happens on your end with Mr. Depp? Um, it just made Johnny matter, he got more upset, grabbed the phone, and started screaming at Io. Uh, he just started screaming at the top of his lungs, said, you dyke bitch, you don't know what you're Talk, you know, just screaming expletives, insulting names, um, and uh, telling Io that he can have me and, you know, fuck off and uh, just screaming at him. Um, I, you know, that's best I can describe it without getting into the details. He tosses the, the phone, you know, down on the couch and heads upstairs. And I pick up the phone and and try to you know apologize for the fact that my husband at the time just screamed at my friend on a cold call um i didn't want io to think that's why i had called io you know to just be screamed at and blamed for something that sounded crazy for lack of a better explanation it sounded crazy io um said something to me on speaker phone um, and um, reminded me I wasn't safe. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Your Honor, it's not offered to prove the truth of the matter. It's to show what caused Mr. Depp to be set off and come back. I, I mean, it's not offered to prove the truth of what he's saying. It's not hearsay. In that I'll nature. overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you. Please tell us what Io said and what then happened with Mr. Depp. Io said, Amber, get out of the house, get out of the house now, you're not safe. Get out of that house. I had been there after the cleanup or for the cleanup after the December 15th, 2015 incident. And objection, your honor, no responses. I, right. I think she can provide the That's, context. I'll sustain the objection, next okay. question. Okay, so please, please continue. Johnny hears this when he's on the stairs, he made it up one flight of stairs, heard this, turned around, Came bolting down the stairs, grabbed the phone from my hand, and really, really started screaming this time. Lit into IO, uh, called IO every imaginable, every imaginable horrible name that you can say to a LGBT QIA person for one, and and any person, any human being ever. I mean, just screamed at IO. Um, some really nasty stuff and he when he was done he says you know you want to you want to have you want to have my woman now you want to have my bitch you can have you you take her you can have her and he with that picks up just pulls his arm back with the phone and throws it at my face 
hit me right in my, it felt like my eye. I put my head in my hands and immediately start crying. Um, I said, you hit me with the phone. Johnny, you hit me. And I'm sitting on the couch. I didn't even have time to react, you know? I, I didn't even have time to put my hands up. I was still sitting cross-legged in my socks on the couch. And I haven't seen him for a month. And last, you know, several times now that I've seen him, he's hit me. And I didn't even have time to react to this. He comes over to me um, as I'm crying and he does that taunting thing to me. He says, oh yeah, I hit you, huh? I hit you, yeah? And he just feels like wax me on top of my head and just this heavy ringed hand landed on top of my, my skull, grabs me by the hair, yanks me up off the couch. I'm struggling to stand up. And um, I don't know if he was intending to um, hit me in the face or if he was just trying to grab my face, but he was making this um, gesture around my face to try to hold, to expose my face to him. And he was like, yeah, let me see how bad I hurt you. Let me see it. Let me see how bad I hurt you this time. What if I pull your hair back? What if I pull your hair back? And he yanks my hair back. I'm trying to prevent him from landing the blows to my face and trying to prevent my face from being exposed. And I just remember this mocking taunt he was doing with me as he is yanking me around the room. Uh, and then I hear my friend come into the room. Um, I hear her. Johnny hears her too. He lets go of me and turns and... Just tell the jury who your friend is. Raquel, my best friend at the time who lived in the neighboring apartment. Uh, she came in and uh, Johnny m m moved towards towards her and she ran towards me. Um, Johnny looked at her, looked at me. I retreated to the only place I had to go, which is the corner of the room the, where the couch was. I retreated kind of to the couch and Raquel uh, and Johnny both ran up to me. Uh, John, uh, Raquel got in front of Johnny. She kind of managed to get right in front of him in between he and I. And I'll never forget it. Just very slowly, calm, very, very, in just a very slow, but very concentrated, very controlled, slow way. Just put both of her arms, her hands up like this. And like I've seen people do with horses. That's what it reminded me of. She just went, no, no, Johnny, no. And she just got in front of us, in between us, put her, both of her palms out. Johnny kind of squared off to her, ran into her arms, and she just repeated herself very slowly, very calmly, very directly. He hit both of her arms off of his chest like that and barreled towards me. I instinctively curl up on the couch and I just feel her arms come around me next to me. She was sitting on my left next to me on the couch. I just feel her arms around me and I'm just looking down at the carpet, feeling her arms. And that's when Johnny, who I can see partially and hear is right in front of me and he's screaming at me to get the fuck up. Amber, get the fuck up. Amber, get the fuck up. Amber, get the fuck up. And every single time he said it, he's screaming it louder and louder and louder. I think he screamed it probably about 10 times so loudly. The next thing I hear is boss, boss. And I realize that his two security guards had come into the, to the apartment after Raquel. I see them and, or hear them and uh, Johnny turns to them and I, I see Jerry say, boss, boss. And I get up off the couch and I say to Jerry. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I'm not offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted at all. I'll sustain the objection. All right. Next one. So don't tell us what you said to Jerry, just what happened next. 
then they tell him something, um, and uh, he uh, picks up the the bottle that I guess he walked in with. Uh, it was a this is Magnum. Mr. Depp or Jerry? I'm sorry, Johnny. Okay. And uh, starts smashing things off the nightstand, the, the, the coffee table, starts screaming, uh, and they kind of, I feel them kind of corral him. I'm not making direct eye contact, but I can kind of just sense and feel and sound and hear things smashing as he exits the, the apartment, kind of knocking things off the countertops and uh, breaking things on the way. I, I um, realize he, you know, he's punching something. I, I assume it was the picture because it, it, it broke right after he walked past it. And he leaves that apartment. I hear him in the hallway, still screaming. I hear more doors opening, more racket. Eventually, Josh, Raquel's uh, a husband, comes into the room and uh, uh, brings me to safety, brings Raquel and I to safety in, um, in their apartment. And that's where I stayed for the next few hours. So who called the police? I believe it was I.O. Objection calls for speculation. Your Honor, this is not, you, we have to have the context here of somebody called the police because then the police come. So right. I think we have to put, I mean, it's not offered again to prove the truth of the matter asserted. It's just who called the police. Your Honor, the objection is not hearsay. It's speculation. Do you know who called the police? Yes, I do now. I'll okay. sustain the objection. The All next right. Question. Did you have... A convert? Did you were you present when there was a discussion about calling nine one one? Objection calls for hearsay. I'm asking if she was present. Sustained objection. Next question. Did you call nine one one? No. Okay. Did Rocky call nine one one? Objection you, calls for speculation. Do you know whether Rocky called nine one one? I do know whether she did. And did she, she did not? Okay. Um. All right. So. What happens, when did you learn that the police had been called? Uh, roughly an hour, I don't, at some point shortly after uh, Johnny and his security guards left. Okay. And what did you do as a result of knowing that the police were coming? I, I felt panicked. I, I, I didn't know what to do um, because I didn't know what they were going to do when they saw the state of the place. He'd also smash up the other apartment where I kept all my things. So I didn't know what they were going to do. And I panicked. I called. Um, I called the only lawyer I have, which is my um, entertainment lawyer. He does like my movie contracts and stuff. And I asked him for advice. And then. What, without telling what he said, what happened next? I called a domestic relations attorney after that conversation. And had you known this domestic relations attorney before then? No, I did not. Did you get that name from your entertainment attorney? Yes, I did. Okay. And when you called the domestic relations attorney, without saying what she said, what did you do as a result? I told the police officers who arrived that I would not Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Again, not offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted. All right. I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? I repeated to the officers, I refuse to cooperate at this time at the advice of my attorney. Okay. Did you call your publicist that night? No. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to ask you to take a look at some pictures, but before I get there, I want to just ask you a couple of questions leading up. What were you doing when the police officers arrived? When, at that time when I, after I learned that they were coming, uh, my best friend 
took pictures of me. Uh, we took pictures of the house and my face. Okay. I'm going to, and did your best friend take any pictures while the officers were there? We took pictures before and while they were there and after. Okay. We took pictures throughout. Okay. So I'm going to take you now, Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 706? I think we can do the native on this one. Yes, thank you. Uh, does this accurately depict the scene portrayed? Yes, it does. Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of Defendant 706. No objection. 706 in evidence and published. And would you please describe to the jury what this is a picture of? This is um, my face after Johnny threw a phone at it. Okay. Um, I'm going to now, Michelle, ask you to pull up Defendant 708. And does this accurately depict the scene portrayed in this picture? Yes, it does. All right. And I also see that there is uh, a, a little, what we call metadata item on there. How, how do you get that on a picture? How does that happen? Can you Ob just describe briefly? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, that's speculation, uh, lack of you, foundation. You want to approach. Yeah. Can you please explain how this particular item on here got onto the pictures? Um, it's a it's a feature that was on um, iPhotos, you know, where the where your pictures are stored on your phone. Typically, you just push info. And and was that pushed in this, these instances? I pushed pictures? info, and that's what came up. Okay, Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of defendants in 708. Yeah. Objection seven. Your Honor, I would just ask the picture be redacted um, on hearsay grounds. Um, uh, Your Honor, I, I, for the I, metadata, okay, if you want alleged to metadata. Yeah. Okay. One moment, please. I'm just right. trying to figure out how to move this faster. Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right, I'm going to move the admission of uh, 708 with the redaction, Your okay. Honor. Okay, any objection to that? Um, there still needs to be another redaction at the top, Your Honor. Okay. We'll get it. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, 708 with the redactions, okay? Thank you, Your Honor, and I would also like the record to reflect that we, um, we're, we're publishing this to the jury? Yes, no objection, correct? Okay. Yes, there we go. Okay, I would like the record to reflect that this was the photo that was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon. Objection, Your Signet Honor. 20, no, that, that is Your Honor, we couldn't that is put him in because Honor. we hadn't identified him. Now the jury should be entitled to know which photo Your Honor, was shown. Your Honor, we ask that we approach. approach. Okay, we can approach. This is inappropriate. So, for the record, this particular photo was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as Exhibit 24 in both of the depositions that were shown earlier where the pictures were not uh, allowed to be shown yet because they hadn't been admitted. Amber, will you please describe for the jury what, what is depicted in this photo? Yes, that's a picture of my face. Um, taken um, that evening, um, shortly before 9.30, um, after Johnny hit me with the phone. Okay. Now we can take this one down and let's go to Defendant's Exhibit 709. And based on the court's ruling, I'm going to ask if you can redact that, Michelle, please. I move the admission of 709. All right, any objection? Not with redactions, right. thank you. 709 with redactions and evidence, you can publish. If it could be published to the jury, Your Honor, thank it you. Is. And Your Honor, for the record, this is the photo that was shown to Officer Signs and to Officer Haddon as Exhibit 25 for both of their depositions. Okay. Amber, could you please describe for the jury what's depicted here? Uh, that is my face after um, after the phone incident, okay. right, it's that night. All right, let's uh, bring defendant 710, please. And Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Exhibit 710. The redactions have been already placed right. on it. Any objection? No objection. Right. Thank you. 710 with the redactions. You can publish. And if we could publish, Your Honor. And for the record, this a photo was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon. It was Exhibit 26 for both of their depositions. And please describe for the jury what's depicted here, Amber. Uh, that is my face in uh, yet a different light um, that same evening after Johnny hit me with the phone. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to Defendant's Exhibit 711. And I'm going to move the admission of uh, 711, Your Honor, with the redactions. All right. Any objection? No objection. All right. 711 with redactions and evidence. Publish. And for the record, Your Honor, uh, for the jury's purposes, this was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as Exhibit 27 to both of their depositions. And could you describe what's de depicted here, Amber? Yes, that is another angle, another lighting of my face okay. uh, after the phone. And that when, evening. And when you say angle or lighting, what, what did Rocky do in, in taking these pictures? Objection uh, calls for speculation. I said, what she do? To overrule. Thank you. Uh, Raquel um, took pictures of my face in various um, places around the penthouse. penthouse the, the apartments have really different lighting, you know, uh, really dark in some places. Um, anyway, so we just took pictures in different lighting so that... Um, we had an accurate 
portrayal and depiction of what had happened. And, and why did you take the pictures? Uh, Raquel did it to protect me because the cops were coming, and um, we knew we or the, the, we knew that the police. At the, I think at this point that we they were already here. They were with us, but we weren't. Maybe this was right before. I'm not quite sure without seeing the timestamp, but. We weren't sure what was going to happen, what the police were going to say, what they were going to do. Um, we didn't know what Johnny was going to do, what he was going to say, so she wanted to protect me. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and bring up 712. Right, move the admission of 712, Your Honor. All right, any objection? No, thank you, Your Honor. Right, 712 with redactions, you can publish. Thank you, Your Honor. And please describe what's depicted here. Uh, that is a, another picture of my face okay. uh, taken around the same time. Okay, and then let's go to 713. Move the admission of 713, Your Honor. All right. Any objection? No objection. All right, 713 with redactions. Can you publish? And for the record, this one was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as well as Exhibit 29 to both of their depositions. And just describe briefly to the jury what this is. This is a, another picture of my face taken at the exact same time and in the same location as the other one, just with one of the lights turned on or an additional light turned on in the previous one. Okay, let's go to 714. Move the admission of 714, Your Honor. No objection. All right, 714 with redactions. And please tell the jury what this depicts. This is um, another angle of my face or another picture of my face taken at a different time. I don't know if this is um, later or before because I can't see the time on it. Okay. If you take that down, let's go to 715. I'm going to move the admission of 715, Your Honor. Uh, no objection. All right, 715 with redactions in evidence. You can publish. Thank you. And uh, for the record, this one was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as Exhibit 17 for both. Um, please describe for the jury what's, this, what's depicted here. Uh, that is a picture of my face. Um, some point later on in the night, it looks like that was taken in Rocky's apartment or in the apartment that she was staying in. Okay, and let's go to 716. Move the admission of 716. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 716 evidence says redacted. And Emma, could you please tell the jury what this picture depicts? Uh, yes, it's the business card that one of the police officers left for me uh, in case I changed my mind and wanted to comment. Okay. And uh, were the pictures that we have just seen before this, were they taken before the pictures of the uh, police card, the card that was left after, or do you know? Objection compound. It's not. And calls for speculation. Your Honor, compound oh, is oh, over, over. Thank you. Uh, they, we took pictures before, during, and after. And the question I had for you is the pictures you've seen so far, were those taken before 
at the time of this, uh, before this card was presented to you and you took the picture, after, or do you know? Uh, some of them were, but without seeing all the timestamps, I can't tell exactly. Okay, that's fair. Thank you. Okay, and then I'm going to ask you to take this one down and go to 717. I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm going to move the admission of 717, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. All right, 717 is redacted in evidence. Published. Thank you. And please just briefly describe to the jury what this is. Uh, the two officers that um, first responded left me that card. This is the front of the business card they left. Okay. Um, can you tell the jury, just explain what the interaction was that you had with the police officers, um, just describing what you observed uh, as they came through. Uh, I did not want to speak to them. I asked that Raquel's partner or husband ask them to go away without speaking to me. And, and just so the jury understands, who was Judge, who, who was Raquel's fiance at that time? Um, his name is Josh Drew, and he and Raquel lived in the apartment at Johnny's invitation across the hall from us. Um, Raquel had keys; we kind of shared keys. It was they were our neighbors, but had keys to our house. Okay. So why didn't you want to cooperate with the police? Because I, I, I wanted to protect Johnny. I didn't want him to be arrested. I didn't want him to be in trouble. I didn't want the world to know. I didn't want this to come out. I didn't want him to be in trouble. I didn't want this to be... I wanted to protect Johnny. Let's uh, go to uh, Defendant's Exhibit 1374. That's 1374. One moment, Your Honor. All right. Hey, thank you. <coughs> All right, move the admission of 1374A, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. 1374 in evidence, 1374A in evidence, I'm sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and Amber, what is this? Uh, it's another picture of my face uh, after Johnny threw the phone at it. Okay. And then let's go to 1493T. <coughs> and move the admission of... 1493T? No objection. All right, 1493T in evidence. And what does this depict? Um, this is a picture of um, my eye, my face, after that incident. Perhaps by the lighting, it looks like it might have been taken the next day, but I can't be tell. I mean, I can't tell for sure. Okay. And then let's go to 1493S. And move the admission of 1493S. No objection. All right, 1493S in evidence. Publish. And what does this depict? Uh, I, and this is another picture of my eye and uh, side of my face. Now, were there also pictures taken of the property that you described, Mr. Deb? destroying or damaging yes there were okay michelle can you bring up defendants exhibit 700 and based on your honor's rulings we will uh, take off the metadata
Move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 700. No objection with redaction. 700 with redactions. You can publish. Can you please describe for the jury what's depicted in this photo? Yes, um, my friend had, was preparing for a bead show and had displays to show these bead necklaces she made. And uh, she needed some counter space in order to kind of set up the displays that she was going to use the next day. So she asked me earlier in the day if she could use the free counter space in that penthouse, penthouse five, to kind of set up those, those display racks. They were set up um, in that room um, when Johnny went in there to destroy things, as he does. Uh, and this depicts some of that damage? Yeah, he, security let him in, even though I had asked Objection, Your Honor, not to. speculation. Uh, I, I don't think that was speculation. And lack of foundation. Oh, you, I'll sustain his foundation if you want to know. Okay. Um, so, what, what does, what's depicted, what's the damage that was done? Well, because Johnny would always smash up my things and destroy my property when he was mad at me. Um, I had asked that they not let him in to, so that he could do that. I mean, the only purpose to let, for him to be let into Penthouse 5 in that state, he doesn't have property in there. The only way for, the only reason for him to go in there would be to destroy it. And they, of course, let him into Penthouse 5. Objection, Your Honor. So that he could go. Yes, Lack of foundation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Just tell the jury what he did here that's depicted in this. This is just a, a one corner of the room that shows the destruction. He just went in there with this bottle swinging and destroyed, <laughs> smashed a bunch of things. Objection, Your Honor. This is speculation. All she right. hasn't established that she was there. I, I, I'll sustain if you want to lay a foundation. It's okay. Fine. okay. Uh, did anybody else, to your knowledge, go in there and do this? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. I, I'm trying to lay the foundation here, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Well, let's do this. Never mind. We'll, we'll let somebody else tell who did it, okay? Sure. Um, just all I'm asking here is what... What is the damage? What has been done that's depicted here? This is just one of Raquel's bead racks that he um, Objection, smashed. Your Honor. Speculation. Okay. I'll sustain. Objection. All right. Let's go to 701. Move the admission of 701. Uh, with redaction, no objection. All right, 701 with redactions and evidence. Thank you. Amber, can you please describe what's depicted here? Um, yeah, it is our bedroom and penthouse three, the main penthouse. Um, looks like he was just um, throwing things. Objection, Your Honor. Calls sustain, for speculation. Sustain the objection. So. Just describe what you see here as opposed to what you say he did. Can I see a bunch of art um, tossed on the bed. Okay. Where was that art before Mr. Depp was at your house on May 21, 2016? Um, hanging on the wall where it belongs. Okay. All right. Let's go to, Michelle, can you bring up Defendant 702, please? Oh, Your Honor, and I forgot on the last two. For defendants, Exhibit 700, that was shown to Officer Sines and Haddon. It was Exhibit 39 to both of theirs. And Exhibit 701 was shown to Haddon only, and that was Exhibit 30 in his deposition. I move the admission of 702, please. All right, any objection? No objection. All right, 702 with redactions. Thank you, Your Honor. And let the record reflect this was also shown to Officer Haddon as deposition exhibit number 40. And can you please describe for the jury what's depicted here? Uh, yes, it is broken glass from one of the bro broken um, pictures that were hanging on the wall. And where is this physically? This is in Penthouse 5 on the stairwell. Okay. Let's, Michelle, can you bring up defendant 703, please?
Move the admission of Defendant 703. No objection. All right, 703 with redactions. You can publish. Thank you, Your Honor. And the record, let the record reflect that this was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as Exhibit 41 for both of their depositions. And Amber, please describe for the jury what's depicted here. Uh, it's another photograph of this stairwell uh, in the same apartment, Penthouse 5, and, which and is the apartment where I kept my things. Okay. And is that glass on the stairway? Yes, from one of the broken uh, picture frames on the wall. We had a lot of picture, I had a lot of picture frames on the on the um, walls. And um, uh, many, if not all, most of them were smashed. Okay. Uh, let's take this one down and go to 704, please, defendants. Michelle, thank you. Move the admission of defendant 704. No objection. All right, 704 with redactions. You publish. Thank you, and let the record reflect that this was shown to both Officer Signs and Haddon as Exhibit 34 to both their depositions. And Amber, please describe for the jury what, what's depicted here. Uh, just another piece of glass. It looks like the base of a wine glass. Um, that is in Penthouse 3, the main apartment. Okay. And when you say wine glass, did you see this particular uh, glass there were glasses um, in the kitchen and uh, always and when Johnny was walking out I saw him myself um, swinging the magnum sized bottle uh, and I could hear glass breaking uh, and things falling okay thank you Michelle can you bring up 705 please Move the admission of 705. No redaction. No, excuse me, no objection. All right. And let 705 in evidence. We'll thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Haddon and Exhibit 36 of his deposition. Amber, can you please describe for the jury what's portrayed here? Uh, things knocked over on the kitchen uh, countertop, and I see p pieces of broken glass on the countertop as well. Okay. Let's go to 707. Jerry, what's depicted here? This is the hallway leading um, out, leading up to the apartments. Uh, so this is the hallway that connects all of the apartments. It's kind of an indoor-outdoor um, sort of hallway, meaning it's covered, but it's it's exposed on the far ends of both um, to the elements. So this is not carpet. It's like a, a it's like a plasticky. Uh, I don't know how to describe the material. It's like a plasticky kind of um, um, netting, not netting. It's difficult to describe, but it's a kind of an outdoor sort of carpet. All right, and what's depicted there? Uh, wine on the floor and a little on the wall, it seems. Okay. Let's go to 718, please. Move the admission of 718. No objection. All right, 718 with redactions and evidence. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon in Deposition Exhibit 31 for both of them. Amber, please describe for the jury what's depicted here. It's um, another, another photograph on the floor, not the wall. Uh, this one appears to be remarkably unbroken. Okay. Let's go to 719, please. Move the admission of Defendant 719. 
I had no objection. All right, 719 with redactions. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. And they let the record reflect that this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon in their depositions, Exhibit 35 to both. And Amber, please just describe for the jury what's depicted here. Uh, at the one corner of the kitchen in penthouse three, looks like um, one of the one of the things that was knocked off of the kitchen island when Johnny left. Okay. Let's go to defendant seven twenty, please. Thank you, Michelle. Move the admission of defendant 720. No objection. Right, 720 with redactions. And Evidence. let the record reflect, Your Honor, this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon, deposition exhibit 43 to both. All right. uh, Amber, could you please describe to the jury what's depicted here? That's um, my office. It's a corner of my office. Uh, and that is um, a box of like sentimental things, things from my childhood or things that are important to me, keepsake box that um, has been dumped uh, out, it looks like. Okay. Let's go to, def let's go to defendant 721. Of the admission of defendant 721. No objection, Your Honor. 721 with redactions. Publish. Thank you, Your Honor. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon in deposition exhibit 44 for both. Amber, please describe for the jury what this depicts. Um, it's a, again my office. Different, same thing, different angle. Okay. Let's go to 722. Move the admission of defendants exhibit 722. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 722 with redactions and evidence. Thank you. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Officer Haddon as deposition exhibit 42 to both. Amber, please describe to the jury what's depicted here. That's a picture of my friends and I um, when we were at that London house um, that Johnny punched. Okay. You saw him punch this? I heard it. All right, let's go to 723, please. Move the admission of defendant 723. Any objection? No objection. All right, 723 redacted in evidence. Let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon in their depositions, Exhibit 38 for both. Amber, please describe for the jury what's reflected. Um, um, one of the, um, um, it looks like a magnum bottle of wine um, that is empty or spilled on the floor. Can, can you tell where that is located? Um, it looks like it would be penthouse five. Okay. Let's go to 724. Move the admission of defendant 724. No objection. All right, 724 with redactions. Thank you. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon as their deposition exhibits 33. Amber, please tell the jury what's depicted here. This is um, more wine that Johnny was spilling as he was using the um, using the bottle he was holding as a you know a bat of sorts. Okay. Let's go to 725. We're almost done, just two more. Promise. Move the admission of defendant 725. No objection. All right, 725 for the redaction. So let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon in, as deposition exhibit 37 to their depositions. Amber, please tell the jury what's depicted here. 
uh, more spilled wine on the floor. This looks like uh, penthouse five. Okay. And the last but not least, Michelle, please, defendants 726. Uh, move the admission of? Um, no objection. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I believe the jury needs a tissue. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. We will, we will get a tissue. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Halusa. All right. No objection. 726 with redactions. Thank you. All right, and let the record reflect that this one was shown to Officer Hines and, and Haddon as Deposition 32 exhibit to their depositions. And Amber, please just describe to the jury what's depicted here. Uh, more spilled wine on the floor, penthouse, three appears. Okay, thank you. Now, when the police officers were there, did either of them take you aside by yourself and talk with you? Yes. Which one or both? Uh, the male officer I did not have much interaction with. The female officer asked to, said she needed to speak to me by, by myself, pulled me aside. Uh, we went into penthouse three, the main penthouse, uh, to speak there because I had been in penthouse one, Raquel and Josh's um, apartment up until that moment. Okay. And then what, if anything, did she ask you? Uh, she asked me if I would make a statement, if I would cooperate. She kind of indicated to me, I don't remember if it was a, what word she said, but she kind of gestured t to my face and... Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Uh, I, I think I'll she could, if she gestured, gesturing to her face is not hearsay, I'll, I'll sustain, not a statement. I'll sustain the objection next question. Okay. And it's also not offered to prove the truth of the matter. I'll say it. Okay. Okay. So what happened next? I, uh, how, how, let's do this. How long were you with the officer when she took you aside? Uh, a few minutes, um, if that. Okay. And as a result of that, did, did you cooperate? No, I did not, but uh, it was my understanding that I couldn't stop them from walking through the apartment, which is what they indicated to me. Okay. And were you with them when they walked through the apartment? Uh, no, Josh, well, in, I was with them at the beginning of Penthouse 3. Josh, uh, Raquel's partner, um, took over from there and showed them around the house up through penthouse three, which connects on the top floor to the neighboring apartment, penthouse four, and then on to penthouse five. They all connect on the top level. So Josh walked the officers through the, through the house. Okay. And what, if anything, did you say about the identity of Mr. Depp? Nothing. Were you asked? Yes. But you refused to tell them? Objection uh, leading. Sustain. Okay. Uh, why did you refuse to tell the police officers Mr. Depp's identity? Because I did not want them to arrest Johnny. I did not want this to happen. I did not want any of this to happen. I didn't want to get him in trouble. So I said, well, I can't. I, I just refuse to cooperate. Okay. Now, after how long, approximately how long were the police officers there? I don't recall exactly. Maybe, uh, I'd say less than half an hour. I, I really don't know exactly, but they weren't there very long at all. Okay. Now, after the police officers left, what did you do? Um, we cleaned up a bit uh, because there was broken glass and we had dogs. So we tried to clean up the, the mess and especially the glass. And um, Josh, Rocky, Liz, and I, we kind of just 
cleaned up and eventually um, sat on the couch and they just tried to comfort me. What, if any, knowledge did you have that there was going to be a second set of officers coming later that night? I didn't know about that. That surprised me. When did you learn that a second set of officers were coming to the, the penthouse that night? I think I learned about it when they were there, when they arrived. Okay. Uh, and we've seen the, the body-worn video um, on that. Is there anything that you recall outside of what was reflected on Officer Gaitland's uh, uh, body-worn video? I couldn't see much of... of of what was on that video. I just, uh, I remember being surprised that they were there, not really knowing why they were there. I assumed it was because I was encouraged to make a statement by the first set of officers. Objection, like, Your Honor, hearsay. All right, just I'll keep going forward. forward. Okay. And I was sitting on the couch. It was uh, some time, hours, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe between an hour two hours, maybe more, I, I don't really recall, but we had cleaned up and we were resting and they were comforting me when they came and um, they didn't seem to, they didn't do it the first set of officers did. They um, just kind of came into the apartment, confirmed that it, we that, that I was okay or that we were okay. They didn't really seem to be that concerned um, and they didn't demand to do a walkthrough like the first set of officers had, um, and they left. Okay. And what, if any, cooperation did you give them? Well, I didn't need to. I didn't really cooperate with them. I didn't talk to them. I didn't. I don't. I didn't even get up off the couch. I was speaking to them from a, a, a quite a bit of a distance, like between you and I, and maybe more. And I didn't really say anything. I just kind of acknowledged that they entered and that I that that was it did, did you provide them with mr. Depp's name no way did they ask no okay all right I'm going to take you to the next day uh, May 22 um, and I'm going to Michelle can you bring up defendants exhibit 772 What, if any, efforts did Mr. Depp make to reach out to you the day after this happened? Well, he he made several efforts. Immediately, he kind of reached out and lashed out. Um, again, kind of going on what seems to be slightly delusional thinking that just because he saw all my friend's beads out on the countertop that it had become a workshop or a studio for her. So he seemed angry about you know, this perception that this bead display that my friend had set up was evidence of her running some sort of workshop. And he also accused us of having, or me, of having invited someone else to live there who who wasn't living there, um, who, who was just in the apartment when Johnny stormed in. So he just kind of lashed out and then the tone changed in the days that followed. And let, let me stop you there. So I'm going to ask you to take a look at, at Defendant's Exhibit 772. Uh, and is this a text message from Mr. Depp to you? Yes, it is. And it's on 522 at 1223 a.m. So it's early morning hours after 521. Would that be fair? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant 772. No objection. All right, 772 in evidence with the identifiers redacted. And publish. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. And uh, I know you started to talk about this, Amber, um, but it says, uh, I'm an idiot. PH5 is Rocky's studio. You are shameless. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Was that what you were talking about with him thinking that you're. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then. Uh, Obviously, we can read that he says, I tried to make it work. You just turned more and more into a spoiled brat. All you wanted was to make me fucking miserable. Well, I'm finally there. I'll never be able to understand how I fell in love with you. You're not her. I loved you more than anything. I did everything that I could, but you never fucking loved me. I was merely convenient for you. 
I hope our divorce goes as quickly as possible and that it is as painless as possible. So sorry you were as unhappy with me as you were. Obviously the purity of whatever was has been gone for a long time. I will miss the moments of beauty and truth. Goodbye, Amber. What the fuck was I thinking? I wish you all merit, all you merit, the former him. Um, what if any discussions did you have with Mr. Depp about divorce that night? Uh, we did not uh, have a discussion about that uh, that evening. We didn't have time. He was um, obsessed with dog poop. Okay. That's what he wanted to talk about. All right, let's take this down and let's go to Defendant's Exhibit 773. Now, this is a text exchange between you and Mr. Depp. Uh, it starts with Mr. Depp on 521 at 6.58 p.m. just saying here. Does that refresh your recollection of when he arrived at your penthouse on May 21? Uh, yes. Okay. And then the next series are on 5.22. They start at 5.13. And you're discussing talking. You said, sorry, I'm just leaving Amanda's birthday now. Do you see that? Yes, I do. All right. And then he responds to that, correct? Yes. All right. Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of Defendant 773. Your Honor, if we could just have a minute to review sure. this exhibit. Yes, ma'am. Is it just this page? Uh, no, there's three pages. Three pages. I'm just reading Michelle's hands. <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. All right, 773 in evidence with identifiers for Thank you. Thank you. And if we could, okay, we've got it published to the jury. So let's go to the top, Michelle. And so it starts out with, with him. This is the 5:21, 6:58 p.m. saying he's there. Correct? Yeah, but I think he came in later than that. It took him some time. Okay. And then if we move up, the next one is you uh, at 522 uh, at 513 p.m., correct? Yes. And then you say, thank you, and then can we still speak in a min? What do you recall of why you sent those texts? I believe we had spoken on the phone. Or the... I can't uh, control this, correct? The screen, uh, I, I don't know. We can I, give you control, yes. Maybe we should do that and clear out my purples. I just don't know what was sent right before go, this. Go ahead, go ahead. You're no, she can't scroll. She's oh. asking to scroll. Okay, Michelle, mm -hmm. let's have you scroll if you can. Just, just go ahead and scroll through just slowly so she can read the whole thing. Makes sense. Um, Does that help refresh your recollection? Uh, yes, I believe that 
uh, that um, I believe he had apologized to me after the phone incident. I had commitments that I had to attend the following day uh, on the 22nd. So the beach show I referenced, I mentioned to you, I had to go to, I would also had to bring a cake to a friend's birthday party. So I had things I was, I unfortunately had to do that day. And I remember there was communication with Johnny, um, both by phone and by text, uh, where he was uh, telling me that he was clean, that he was sober, he um, was clear mind, it wasn't the monster, and that he was so sorry. Um, but I, um, I had already committed to filing for divorce. And um, eventually I have to um, let him know that it's not just I'm not just saying it in the anger, in the fights that, like we had done, you know, both he and I did that uh, at times in some of our fights, especially towards the end of our relationship. And so um, I let him know that I, I was, I was um, serious about filing this time and that I had had enough after the, after the fight. Session, Your Honor, here, say enough. Okay. Overruled. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to draw your attention to the bottom of the page, Defendant's Exhibit 773, and this is at 522, so this is 619 p.m. Do you see that, 522? And he says, just let me know when you have a minute, and I'll give you a call. Nothing I have to say. You should elicit anything but a sense of ease. Do you see that? Yes. And then he says, all my love and profound apologies. What was he apologizing for? Objection. You know? Calls for speculation. What was your understanding of what he was apologizing for? Speculation, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. I, okay. In his phone call with you, did he tell you what he was apologizing for? Yes. What did he say? He was sorry that he reacted the way he did. He said he didn't mean to hurt me, he didn't mean to hurt me if he really hurt me that bad he's sorry that he just he didn't mean to okay Michelle if we can go to the next page up to the green please and he says here I'm sad I'm scared and I'm broken my sweet slim and then he says, I want you happy. I have zero harsh feelings. I am clear and I am me. What did you understand him to mean by I am clear and I am me? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. I, do you, do you I know what he meant. Okay. But, Your Honor, there's he use that phrase with you? I'll, I'll, hold on. I'll sustain that objection. I'm trying next, to get to the yeah, next I know. one. Here. Then you can ask your next question. Thank Go ahead. You. Do you. Did he use those phrases with you? During your marriage? Yes, he did. What did Mr. Depp mean when he says, I am clear and I am me? Objection. Calls for speculation. I, I think I established the foundation. O overruled. Go ahead. Thank you. That he had sobered up. That he had sobered up and he was not the monster again, that he was him. That he was a good guy I loved. The one that I trusted. All right. I'm going to ask... Michelle, if you can take that one down and bring in 771, which has already been admitted. Now, those text exchanges were in the 6 o'clock to almost 7 o'clock range. And here, it's 522, it's now 8 o'clock, correct? Yes. And he's telling you, sorry if a bit, please know that my hurt towards you is over. My apologies are eternal and belong to you. Solid. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, and was it your understanding he was apologizing again? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. All right. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Was there anything else he would have been apologizing for that he had done? Objection. Calls for speculation. I'll sustain the objection. That's it. So tell the jury how you felt in that week, May 22 through May 27, and what you 
decided to do. Uh, at the time, it felt like the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I had worked so hard to try to make this relationship work. I went to therapy and went to Al-Anon. I got help. I read books. I did everything I could possibly do, and it didn't work. And um, I find I was I was conflicted. To answer your question, I was conflicted. I knew after he threw the phone at my face that after all that that month of not seeing each other, that not getting better, not getting clean and sober, there wasn't even. I didn't, you know, the 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 the, the all, it, it was falling apart. I knew I had I knew I had to leave him. I knew I I wouldn't. I knew I wouldn't survive it if I didn't. So I made the decision to to file for divorce. It was hard because, um, you know, I loved Johnny so much. I loved him so much. And, and why did you file for divorce? Because I knew if I didn't, that I knew if I didn't, I'd likely not literally survive. I mean, I'm so scared that it was going to end really badly for me. And I, um, I really didn't want to leave him. I loved him so much. I wouldn't have done anything, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't do that one thing. I couldn't stay. The, the promise and the hope that I had, I had become less and less regular and more and more rare. The monster had been this thing that was now the normal and not the exception. The violence was now normal and not the exception. And it was um, so it was so hard. It was so hard, but I knew I had to do it. I believe he would have taken it too far. And I wouldn't be here. Why did you ask for a domestic violence temporary restraining order? I wanted to change my locks. I wanted to change my locks. I wanted a good night's sleep. Security would always let him into the house, no matter what I asked them. No matter when I, when I begged them to let me know when he was coming over. No matter how much I begged them not to let him in when he was mad or drunk or high. And I just I couldn't sleep. I'd wake up in a panic. I was losing hair. I was losing weight. I got really sick. I had shingles. I couldn't sleep. I'd wake up in a panic attack. I had panic attacks all the time. I was falling apart. I was scared and very conflicted because the person I was scared of is also the person I was in love with. It's really, really tricky. And I, I was thinking one step at a time. You know, I was thinking very myopically. I wanted just to get a good night rest, a good night sleep. I just wanted to change my locks. I thought I'd be healthier if I got some sleep and I could think about what to do or how to handle this. If I just could sleep and... When I did, I realized that that wasn't enough, that he could get in any way, that the building wasn't going to stop him from getting a locksmith and coming in. I knew that he would do what he wanted. Objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. It's not up. Thank you. All right, next. Okay. 
So did Mr. Depp show up for the hearing on the DVTRO? No, he didn't. Did you? Yes, I did. Okay. And why did you show up? Because I had to provide testimony for why I needed a restraining order. What, if any, warning uh, did you give Mr. Depp about obtaining the DVTRO? Um, we gave him warning. Um, my counsel and his counsel were in communication and we let them know. We had to. It was mandatory. Okay. It's my understanding of it. I'm not a lawyer. Was there any confusion surrounding whether Mr. Depp was going to file suit as well? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. I'm asking Lack of foundation. Right. I'll sustain as to foundation. If you want. Right. Did you have any confusion as to whether Mr. Depp was going to file as well? So I, um, I filed for divorce uh, on the 23rd, I believe, and I thought that uh, when I went in that Tuesday, we or when we filed for it, remarkably, it managed to stay under the radar. You know, these filings are not private. You can't make them private in California. And remarkably, it had flown under the radar. Uh, it, 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 no one picked up on the fact that I had filed. And uh, as limited as it sounds now, I just wanted as much privacy as we could have. You know, one day at a time, I wanted as much privacy as we could possibly get. And m the filing had been missed by TMZ and, you know, these paparazzi outlets and stuff. But um, between uh, the communications between our counsel, I realized that Johnny was going to file in retaliation. Objection hearsay. Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Um, I'm trying to think how to ask this. So, um, without saying what the counsel said, what were you? What was your understanding, and what was your concern? Objection I hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. All right, well, let's move on. Let's, Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 800, please? Move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 800. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 800 in evidence. Publish. Amber, can you describe for the jury what this picture is? It's a picture of my face while I'm sitting at the courthouse. And were you wearing any makeup? I was wearing nothing, not a stitch of makeup. Okay. Michelle, can you bring up 801, please? Move the admission of 801. No objection. 801 in evidence. Publish. And Amber, if you can tell the jury what this is. That's me while I was. Uh, obtaining my uh, restraining order to be in the courthouse. Okay. And, and what, if anything, did you do while you were at the courthouse? Did you testify? Oh, I, I provided testimony and sat there and cried. Okay. And did you obtain a domestic violence re restraining order? Temporary restraining I did. Order? Uh, the court granted me a restraining order at that time. When you left the courthouse, what did you experience? I walked into the courthouse. It was quiet first thing in the morning. Uh, no one knew about my divorce, so I thought it was going to stay that way. And I walked out uh, to a sea of paparazzi and cameras, photographers. It, it, I, I, to that point, had I mean, at that point in my life, had never seen so many photographers, and they just surrounded me as I walked out of that courthouse and screamed at me, screamed horrible things at me. I'm going to take you just for a moment to make up, and then we'll. That would put okay, after that. Okay, that yeah, that'll be right, a good you. breaking point after the makeup. You said yes. that you didn't testify. You uh, didn't wear any makeup that day. We've heard all kinds of things about makeup in this case. Could you please tell the jury what your uh, regular routine was with respect to makeup? Uh, 
Yes, I get up and wash my face, like most of us, um, and I put on right away uh, a moisturizer that has um, tinted foundation in it. And then I put another foundation on because it has sunblock in it. I have a skin condition that my skin reacts to the sun in, in a bad way. So I have, to, I have to wear sunscreen or sunblock every day. Anyway, so I put on both of those. I put on concealer. Uh, and I, um, I do that before I, I leave my bathroom in the morning. Okay. That's obviously if I don't have a bruise. Now, when you had bruises or cuts of any nature, what would you do uh, about those? Would you try to cover them up? Would you try to just leave them showing? What would you do? Jashiana leading. I, I, I was, oh, yeah, overruled I was, on that. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm, uh, typi I, uh, I'm typically photographed in L.A. when I leave the house, a uh, paparazzi type of photograph. So uh, I always... I'm, you know, somewhat aware of that anyway, um, and no one, woman, no woman wants to walk around with a bruise on her face. Uh, so if I do have a bruise uh, on my face or someplace visible, you know, the main thing you have to ice right away to reduce swelling because no amount of makeup can can fix swelling, but it's very manageable if you ice it really soon. Um, arnica is also a, a great uh, remedy, arnica cream. Uh, and then if you want to cover up a bruise, um, you obviously put foundation first, concealer, and then on top of that, um, I used a, like a, a bruise kit. Not a bruise kit, it's a theater makeup kit, a color correction kit, but I, use, I called it my bruise kit. And, and let me, I, I used this, I think, in opening statement in its defendant's exhibit. It, if you could buy the mic microphone, please, oh. just to, we can't hear you. Um, there you go. May, may I approach uh, the witness to... Well, that's what you just show the council. Uh, yeah, this is what I was talking about as a color correction kit. This is not obviously the exact one I used to carry, but I used to carry it with me all the time. Sometimes this pink is sometimes a little bit more purple of a hue, and sometimes the kits are three colors. You can get them in three or four colors. Sometimes they have even more. But the idea is that you want to counteract whatever color you're working with on the bruise. So the first day of bruising, um, well, the immediate is red. Red is what shows up right away. So you want to go with the opposite on the color wheel by dabbing on a bit of the green or something to counteract the red. After a day or two, you get more purple in a bruise. Um, so you'd obviously have to go with more of the red tones, the, the orange tones here. Um, day two for me was always the trickiest because um, day two just, I feel like, well, day one and day two are hardest for me because that's when you get the most blues and purples and you have to deal with the sensitivity. Bruises don't like to be touched. That's the whole point. Um, so that's the trickiest part, but um, after a few days, that becomes more of a, uh, uh, that blue becomes more of a, um, a, a brown, yellowish brown, like a, a, you know, five, seven days in, becomes more of a yellow green, uh, and then fades into a brown, and then into your skin. And you, whatever color you're working with in the bruise, you want to go opposite color on the color wheel. Uh, so... Uh, the opposite, I mean, so uh, in the first couple of days when you have more of the typical bruise color, the blues and, and the purples, you want to go more of the orange uh, on, the, on the color wheel as opposed to the greens that you start with. And then it, move, it progresses from there. I also noticed that um, bruising on your face uh, t tends to heal a lot faster than, at least for me, it was faster healing than bruises on my body, or at least it seemed like that to me. And um, a nose is pretty much um, unrecognizable after a day or two, depending on how much you ice it. Uh, lips are the hardest because they crack and bleed, of course, uh, but it's easy to hide with lipstick if you're a woman, or you know, if you wear a lipstick, I suppose. Now, we heard some testimony of people uh, in the week of May 21st to 27th uh, saying that you didn't wear a stitch of makeup. Oh, was that true? Objection hearsay. O overruled. 
Uh, they just don't know what they're talking about. I always wear makeup. Okay. You always wear makeup? I mean, it's part of my bathroom routine in the morning. You know, wash my face. I put on moisturizer. My moisturizer has tinted foundation in it. And I'm certainly not going to walk around L.A. with bruises on my face. Okay. I, I think this All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our lunch recess at this time. Again, do not do any outside research and do not discuss the case with anybody. And we'll see you in an hour, okay? Thank you. Court is still in session, so please be quiet in the gallery. Thank you. All right. And again, Ms. Hurd, since you're still under uh, under oath and testifying, you cannot discuss this case in, to include with your attorneys, okay? In your testimony. All right. Let's come back then at 140. Okay. All right. Thank you. 140.